So I have been looking at uh, demand response and distributed generation, or DR and DG for short, for a long time. I've been tracking their evolution and their history. And what I'm noticing is that uh, they're at a point of inflection, that the path we have seen historically is about to change, not just for DR, but also for DG. And, and the reasoning is the following. So for DR, in the past, we have seen a heavy emphasis on wholesale markets. We have seen a heavy emphasis on large commercial industrial customers. And we have seen a lot of emphasis on what I'm going to call curtailment-based programs, where you pay the customer money for them to curtail loud. You don't change the price, you just give them that incentive. That's been the evolution of DR up to now. As I look at the future, I am fairly confident that we're going to see all three of those factors recede into the background and three new factors come into their place. The first thing we're going to see is more emphasis on retail markets as opposed to wholesale markets. We will also see more emphasis on residential customers as opposed to commercial industrial customers. And finally, when it comes to the kind of program design that's being offered, we're going to see more focus on programs that emphasize pricing changes as opposed to curtailment incentives. So those are three big things that I see are going to change for demand response, or DR. When it comes to distributed generation, or DG, which includes things like rooftop solar, for example, uh, it also includes other options like wind in some cases, and it might include microgrids as well. But if we just stay focused on solar for this discussion, solar, as we all know, has been growing very fast. Prices of the photovoltaic arrays uh, that go on customers' roofs are coming down very, very fast. Uh, we also have tax incentives that have been there for a while, and that have lowered the cost even further. And then there has been, uh, in addition to that, the leasing model, where the customer doesn't have to come up with cash to buy the solar arrays. They don't have to do anything in terms of a down payment. It's entirely a leasing model. It's like buying your car with nothing down, that kind of an arrangement. And so those have been the hallmarks of solar up to now. They have really prompted growth in solar. Uh, in the U.S., uh, we have seen phenomenal growth in certain states like Arizona and California. Uh, New Mexico, other states are looking at it as well. Overseas, the growth has been even more pronounced. For example, in Australia, they now have more than a million solar roofs. That's almost one out of seven households in Australia has solar. Situation is quite similar in Germany and Spain. So throughout the globe, solar has been in the ascendant. It's clean, people like the concept of not polluting, they like the independence that solar provides. All of that's great, but what has been missing from the conversation has been that really the bill savings that the solar customers get are really not coming from the utility, they're coming from the neighbors. So in, in large measure, this uh, concept has created an inequity among customers. So if you don't have solar, you're basically paying for the savings that the solar customer is getting. The bill reductions are not real bill reductions. There is a cross-subsidy going on. In a sense, it's a tax on the neighbors. Every time one neighbor puts solar on their roof, they're taxing the other neighbors without the others knowing about it. So that's, um, that was okay when solar was small, when it was being used as a stimulus to promote a new concept. We do that for a lot of other new products and industries. The government subsidizes it. It's a good thing to do. But at some point, we have to really level the playing field, so to speak. And so what you're going to see is rate design is going to change. And electricity prices, in other words, the way they are collected, will be changed. And solar customers will have to pay a demand charge for the fact that they are connected to the grid. Even when the sun goes down, they're still consuming power. Where is that coming from? That's coming from the grid. And so the, the grid meaning the wires, the transformers, the circuits, the feeders, all of that's still there even if you have solar on the roof. That currently is something that the solar customers are not paying for. So they're essentially using the grid as a free battery. And the question is the battery is not free. Somebody has to pay for it. And the neighbors are paying for it. The solar customers are not. So rate design will change. So the solar customers will then have to pay for the grid. They'll still use solar to reduce their energy portion of the bill, but they'll still have to pay for the grid. And what that means is that the growth in solar is going to slow down. 
So that's what I meant by the point of inflection. So if you look at both demand response and distributed generation, both of them are seeing a change that's pretty big, that's going to take a few years to materialize, and that's what I'm calling the inflection point. So they will continue to grow, but they'll be different in the future than what they have been in the past. So that's kind of the summation of what I uh, want to say on the topic.